So, continuing from where we left concerning the promise of provision. Now, let, let, me, let me read again. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verses, uh, uh, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. He can be able to send a lot of favor your way. Sending favor your way. So that you can abound to every good work. Just like, for example, the way I pray to God in the story that I gave you. That I pray to God and told him, God, I'm always chasing money. All my time I'm running after money, after money, after money, and I never get time to read the Bible. I want to read the Bible. I want to understand what you're saying in your word. Please provide for me. Provide for me so that I don't have to think about running up and down to business here and there. I can have enough sufficient so that I can sit down and read the Bible. And God did exactly that for, for almost... Uh, six months, for six months almost that time, I, I was able to sit down and read the Bible. And that's why I'm, I'm able to even teach other people. I told God, please, I want to learn the Bible. And when I learn it, I can teach other people what I've understood. And God was able to open an opportunity for me for provision. You see, it happens. And then um, verse 9 says, it is, is, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. God is not mean. He's never mean. It's only us who make ourselves to feel that way. It's only us and our wrong choices which we make end up making us not be able to get uh, the things that God has promised. So, the promise of provision is to the children of God, is to the people of God, is to the people who are called, uh, 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 who are called by the, w w in accordance to the name of Christ, who are called uh, by the name of Christ, you know. And how can you become a child of God? Is by only one thing that I always say all the time, by believing the gospel. You have to believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins, how that Jesus died, meditate about it, understand it, and say, for sure Jesus did this for me? You mean he died for me? You mean he shed his blood for me? Me, a filthy person like me, he did this for me? He sacrificed himself for me. I received that sacrifice. I believe in what he did for me. You see, there are many religions which say, Jesus did not come to uh, destroy the, 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 the law, but to fulfill it. And they say, no, so he did not destroy it. He came to fulfill it. And then they say, okay, so he did not destroy the law. Then we have also to fulfill it like he did. No, you don't have to fulfill the law. If Jesus fulfilled the law, then what, who are you trying to fulfill the law as well? If Jesus, how did Jesus fulfill the law? He came here as man and he lived all his life and not even one day did he sin. He fulfilled the whole law. Everything which was written in the law, he, he fulfilled it to the core. And right now we are supposed to take his own righteousness, his own fulfillment, which he did, and wear it unto ourselves and say, I have the righteousness of Christ. I fulfill the law through Christ Jesus. And not to say, I'm also trying to go and fulfill the law. Like the way Salvation, uh, SDA, this church, Seventh Day Adventists, they try to say, oh, we have to keep the law. We have to keep the Sabbath. We have to keep this. We have to keep that. You see, we have to fulfill it. Jesus fulfilled it. So we have to do it. No. Then if Jesus fulfilled and you have to fulfill it, then Jesus died for nothing. Then it means Jesus did all this for nothing. If you have to do it yourself as well, then wh why did Jesus have to die then? Why did Jesus have to fulfill the law then if you have to do it yourself? 
You wear the righteousness of Christ. That is what we call the Christ imputed righteousness in you. You have it imputed unto you. And that's the only way you can be saved. By believing in what he did. The finished work at the cross. What he did at the cross. That's exactly what saves you. Wearing that into yourself. Thank you very much brothers and sisters. Thank you. I hope it's been a blessing. You can share the video to others and let them also hear the message.